Hello, my people, and finally, welcome back to another episode of the Celestia Code Reading. Um, in today's video, I am going to be reading both Chapter 11 and Chapter 12, because I have not been um, recording me reading the Celestia Code as much as I should be. Um, but yeah, uh, I am recording it now, so let's just go ahead and get into this. So Chapter 11 is called Accept No Substitutes. Okay, so just so to sit back, relax, and enjoy. Chapter 11 of the Celestia Code. Let's go. Chapter 11. Accept no substitutes. Well, I said looking west into where the sun neared the horizon, I think that's all we can accomplish today. General will be... General, will we have your pleasure of your company tomorrow? Please say no, please say no, please say no. The captain and I will remain in the city tonight. Worse than I had expected. I'm afraid we don't have... Much in the way of prevention. I'm afraid we don't have much in the way of preventions. I don't even know what you eat besides. I left it unsaid, but we both knew what I was referring to. What else did the changelings eat when they weren't sucking the love out of poor, deceived ponies? We sometimes enjoy flesh. She said the word with a hiss, as if she, as if we were imagining the taste. Ew. We don't have any of that to share. I said, striving to keep my revolution revolution from showing. She chuckled, low in her throat. No matter. We have our own provisions. Oh, I hadn't seen any saddlebags, and I was curious to spot myself. The journal nodded t to where the four smaller changelings stood, waiting. They will nourish. Stood waiting. They will nourish the captain and myself. What? I couldn't stop myself from reacting, and the instant I saw the general's lips twitch, I knew she had deliberately been probing me. I got a hold of myself and said as calmly as I could, I'm afraid that we ponies find cannibalism distasteful, so you will forgive me if Jigsaw and I return to the library to dine alone. The general actually laughed out loud at that. Oh, nothing so crude, princess. In fact, I think... You will find this very interesting. It is something that I do not think any outsider has ever seen before. She certainly knew how to get my attention. She turned to face the drones and began to dance. No, really, that's the best way to describe her movements. Even though they weren't anything like any dance I'd seen before. Two of the drones responded, moving and stepping in patterns that matched or complemented the generals. They moved nearer and nearer to each other until their horns were nearly touching. I felt something, not like magic of any kind I knew, but definitely an energy of some sort. After a few moments, the general lifted her head and stepped back. The drone sank into the ground, clearly exhausted. Ah, the general said with satisfaction. The captain repeated the whole procedure with the remaining two drones, while I observed closely and Jigsaw scribbled furiously in her notebook. Afterwards, the general dismissed the drones, and they flew off, fairly unsteadily, in the direction of the changeling hive. Thank you, general, I said. That was very interesting indeed. My pleasure, princess. And now, we can spend the evening together, getting to know one another better. Oh, giddy. After dinner, we lay around the fire, going over our findings of the day. I soothed and coaxed the little books I, I had found back into to some semblance of flexibility while Jigsaw showed me her sketches and notes. Her drawings were really exceptional. I'll go over them in ink when they get back to when we get back to Canterlot, she told me. They'll look even better then. With the exception of the cornucopia building, of course. May I ask you why you are so interested in failed civilization? the general asked. You don't think there's any worth in studying the past, I replied. We have our traditions, she said. Stories of past victories of tactics and tricks that have served well. Such things are worth remembering. But the ponies of this place were failures. They died or... They died out or fled. What can you learn from such as they say? I bite my lip for a moment. I had no... I had to force myself not to go into my standard... Tried about the value of all knowledge. If we discover why they failed, it might help us to avoid making similar mistakes. The general considered that for a moment. 
She mentioned at she mentioned at the books in front of us. Statues, old walls, and trash will tell you that. I really clamped down on the anger that had risen in me when she when she pointed to the old books and said trash. I took a deep breath and slowly let it out. Each piece alone might mean little, but together a larger picture can be built up. It's a method that has been proven again and again. I see, the journalist said, but it still seems like a great deal of trouble to go through for such uncertain gain. Jigsaw jumped into the conversation. Some of us enjoy the process for its own sake. Isn't there something you enjoy doing, just for the joy of doing it? The journalist smiled. A few things, yes, though perhaps you would not appreciate or understand them as I do not understand your archaeology. I would like to try to understand, Jigsaw replied. She seemed to be having better luck at communicating with the general than I had, so I contented myself with half-listening to them talk as I opened one of the books. The smaller one, bound in red, embossed canvas, turned out to be a false picture book. My spells and restored, my spells had restored the colors of the illustrations, somewhat, but they were so slightly faded. It was the story of a young colt who wanted to make a special gift for his mother on her birthday. He tried many different things, always failing in humorous ways, until he finally asked his grandmother for advice. That's when the racist, that's when the racist propaganda started. It was startling. The book has been so simple and unpleasant until then, but wise old grandmare imparted the following wisdom to the little colt. Unicorns do not make, my dear. The lesser races make, and we take. How can I do that, grandmother? I am so small and weak. With magic, size does not matter. Our wise leaders have given us the means to take all we need. Come, and I will show you. The opposite page was a picture of the two of them, walking through the city. I flipped to the page, and then hurriedly flipped right back. I looked up, but Jigsaw and the General were so deep in conversation, and hadn't seen the cartoony but unmistakable picture of the interior of the cornucopia building. I needed to get rid of the changelings. I set the book aside, yawned, and stretched. Oh, my. I'm pretty worn out from all the excitement today. I'm sure the rest of you are tired, too. Shall we turn in? They all looked at me, Jigsaw with a puzzled expression. Puzzled expression. Okay, so... I'm not the most convincing actor in Equestria. I hurried on. General, I'm sure you won't take a miss if I put my shields as I usually do. I'll be using a double enclosure technique, which will take up quite a bit of the room, so you may find it more comfortable outside. Yes, it was pretty lame, but I was improvising on the spur of the moment. Even if the general didn't believe me, I'd hope she had taken the hint that the ponies needed some alone time. What I didn't expect was that Jigsaw would be the one to object. You can set the shields to let me in, right? Because I kind of like to keep talking with the general for a while. Jigsaw flicked the big, the big bug a look. Jigsaw flicked the big bug a look and then stood up. We can go outside so that we don't disturb you. Maybe walk around a little. I was stunned. This was the pony that had been so terrified of the lone changeling that she had wanted to kill it. But she had wanted me to kill it. She was seriously proposing to take a casual stroll around the dark ruins with one of Chrysalis's chief thugs? I was speechless for a moment, and then... I don't... Um, do you really think that's a good idea? Tixa bit her lip and looked away for a moment. Yes, I think so. They're not like us, Twilight, but they're not stupid. The general would have nothing to gain by harming me. Before I could reply, the general stuck her own, stuck her own oar in. What she says is true. I would give you my word, but we both know my word is worthless. I would betray any oath if to do so would gain advantage for my hive. Um, if you're trying to reassure me, that's not helping, I said. Honestly is valued among ponies. Honesty is valued among ponies. Is it not? She said as she rose from the floor. I'll be fine, Twilight, Jigsaw said. We won't- Wait! I got up and walked over and walked over, my horn glowing to life. 
Jigsaw shield away from me. Slightly. What are... Hush. I said, a bit sternly. Stand still. I need to touch you for this to work. I tapped her pole with the tip of my horn. There. There now. I will be able to tell where you are for the next few hours. I will also know if you become upset, afraid, or angry. And I'll be able to... Respond. I turned to the general. Have a nice walk. I didn't, of course. That was a lie for the general's benefit. I settled back down and picked my book. Picked up my book, trying not to grind my teeth. Jigsaw stood there while Jigsaw stood where she was for a long moment and then walked away, the general following her. When they had gone, I looked up. The captain was laying about as far away from me as possible, while still being in the rotunda. I sighed. I might as well go through with the rest of the tornade. Captain? She flinched. Y yes, your highness? Could you please move out into the hall? I I'm going to set up the shields, and they will pretty much fill the room. She scrambled up and darted through the doorway, out, out of the light of the fire. I could only see the eerie blue in her eyes in the darkness. I felt a little guilty for causing such fear in her, but I guess that was the whole point of my demonstration, wasn't it? I couldn't have it both ways. I shoved aside the growing fear that I was messing up the whole expedition somehow and began raising the shields. Shields. Precision, wor precision work was even better than deep breathing exercises for calming me down. I wove, the, I wove in the expectation, specifying a female unicorn, which might have been too particular, but it took more concentration, which was good for me right then. A matrix designed by BBBFF, BTW. The second outer shield was more in the way of a responsive energy shield shell. With a few additions, but with a few additions based on what item improvised the the, blah, 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 the morning the train things had surrounded us. In theory, it would allow me to create new spells, even when under the ab abruption. I was pretty sure I wouldn't I wouldn't use it, but it was good to get practice casting it, as I was sure I'd be experimenting with it when I could do so in more controlled circumstances. I rolled out the city map and put a couple of stones on it to hold it open. I moved my saddlebag so that it was hidden from the hallway where the captain was was, and cast a simple linking spell. Two marks appeared on the map, a horseshoe for Jigsaw and an X for the general. They were in the street outside, moving slowly away from the library. I mentally traced a boundary of a few blocks radius. If they got further away out that, I'd teleport out to check on them. With that done, I went back to the fullest book. Yes, the illustration was definitely the interior of the Cornucopia building. What's more, what's more, it was just as Jigsaw and I had found it. No magical horn, just an empty pedestal. I would have smacked my head into the book with an angry embarrassment if it hadn't been so relatively fragile. Every time I made an unwarranted assumption, it came back to bite me because it was called a Cornucopia. I had assumed it would be a curled ram's horn like the legends, but it had been named for what it did, not what it looked like. In the book, the grandmother showed the showed the coat how to use the device. The device. She stood before it and held a strong mental image of what she wanted in this in this case, a fresh apple. May I have an apple, please? She said, and one appeared on the pedestal. That was about what I expected. Magical synthesis of food from hydro from hydrocarbons. Based on existing patterns was pretty impressive. But I know it was perfectly possible in theory. Then in the book, the code tried asking for a necklace for his mother. I expected a series of comical, ugly results, looking like a young pony's bad drawings of a necklace, but again my assumptions were way off target. The code got nothing. On several attempts, then his grandmother advised him to think of how much he loved his mother. Imagine how beautiful she would look wearing a fine necklace, and try again. That time, it worked. The last page was a large drawing of the colt hugging his mother, who was wearing an exquisite bejeweled choker. Yes, it was a child's book, simple and cartoony in its style, but the last page has been drawn with a great deal of care, and it was obvious that the jewelry was much more detailed than than could be imagined by a young pony. Magic just didn't work that way. Without, con without concussions, 
without concisions, guidance, without, consis without conscious guidance, an exact template was needed. Was the foe's book an exaggeration, or was I missing something? All very possible, but the only way to find out for sure was to get my hooves on the cornucopia, and that wasn't going to happen as long as our changeling keepers were shadowing us. <sighs> that made me glance at the map. Jigsaw and the general were only a street away and no longer moving. I looked over at the hallway and saw that the captain was lying in the doorway, alert but still and silent. I sighed. I could just whip up a hard shield around the city tomorrow, filling out our unwanted guest so that we could get on with our investigations. I could, but there was a chance for something to come out of the situation. An understanding? Maybe an alliance? Whatever it might be, it's worth a little frustration, even even if it's just for the outside opportunity. Okay, a lot. I decided to look through the second book and found a ledger of debts and payments that were oddly enumerated in hours and grouped by item. I went through it, looking for patterns, but found nothing immediately obvious. It had many names and cutie marks noted. It had many names and cutie marks noted, and a couple of lines were abruptly truncated with the word with the words "debt forgiven," but nothing else of interest. I put the ledger aside and thought about brewing a small pot of tea. There was no way I was actually going to sleep until Jigsaw came back. I glanced up at the map again. It hadn't moved. Well, maybe just a little. The horseshoe and the X were nearly overlapping. I squinted at the map thoughtfully. No signal had come from the tracer. I had put Jigsaw that would indicate she was fearful, but there was something there. Something not quite right. I cursed myself for not specifying border limits on the spell when I had casted it, but I had only intended it for an alert, not general surveillance. I got up and walked through the shields. The captain leaped to her hooves and backed away from me. I almost winked out right there. But I reconsidered for a moment. If I suddenly popped into existence right next to the general without cause, she would know I was a lot more nervous and affected by the situation. That I was uncomfortable. Revealing that they were only a street away, I could walk. I'm going out for a short while, Captain, I said to the cowering changeling. I will accompany you, your highness, she said. No. No need. I won't be long. I, my orders. I really felt sorry for her. Who knows what would happen to her if she disobeyed her orders. So purely for the selfless note of, of helping out her quandary, I, I slapped a small gas permeable shield around her. I've drunk a lot of tea tonight, and there are some things ponies prefer to do in private. Captain, I'll let you out when I come back. Please feel free t to tell your superiors that you will prevent... You were prevented me from following your orders to the letter. I trotted out the door and down the street. I decided I would rip a pot of tea to share with her when I got back. Maybe I could get her to relax a little. Did Chanting drink tea? I knew that Chrysalis had when she was disguised as Cadence, but did they like it? Well, I could find out. I went on the block, the long way, thinking I might just take a peek around the corner without letting Jigsaw and the general know I was there. If I was being a silly worry wart, I couldn't just back off without disturbing them. I didn't want to derail what seemed to be the beginning of promise a promising understanding between our species after all. When I got to the corner I heard no conversation, but rather muffled noises that sounded very like some sort of struggle. I bought up three offensive matrix patterns as I stepped around the corner and froze, my jaw dropping in shock. There, halfway down the block, was Jigsaw. Passionately kissing me. Alright guys, uh, let's move on to um, part, I believe it's part 12. And then this will be the last one that I read for you guys. Man, that was a that was an awesome um, um, part 11. Let's see what opening up has to offer. Let's see how they continue it. Okay. And this is the final chapter that I'll be reading today. Um, but um, just letting you know before I um, start this, I will not be able to get any videos out for you guys um, um, on a Saturday or Sunday. The Pony Creator 
or the um or the Let's Play Saturdays video because um I will be on vacation. I'm going to Georgia. So but yeah. Let's just go ahead and get into this. So sit back, relax, and enjoy chapter twelve. Opening up. I ducked around the corner and scrabbled backwards. It's a good thing the thick dust on the ground muffled the sound of my hooves, because I was not thinking about being stealthily right then. What was she doing? Okay, okay, yes. I knew that I knew what Jigsaw was doing. That had been pretty darn obvious, but 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 she knew that the insect wasn't me, and how could she? I bumped tail first into the low edge of a fountain and almost toppled into the dry bowl, making a ridiculous eat noise as as I scrambled to keep my balance. Mind control? Was that it? It must be. I formed a teleport matrix, intending to wink it right next to the general and buck her ugly pointed and buck her ugly pointed teeth down into the throat before she could blink. And I felt the matrix break up because I hadn't properly formed the interstitial entry vortex. It was a fool's mistake. I just wasn't thinking properly. Not thinking properly. Right. Right, my, right. Mind control didn't really make any sense to, to... Not with me still around. So how could the general feed off of Jigsaw? If Jigsaw knew she wasn't the pony that she... Oh, Celestia... Loved? Why would the general need to feed off of Jigsaw anyway? How did, how did she convince Jigsaw to, to... I felt a bile raise in my throat. I stumbled and almost fell. Where was I? I had staggered blindly away from the fountain, and I must have turned a corner somewhere. I dropped to the street, driving a huge puff of dust into the air. I knew I had to do something, but but what? I tried deep breathing to calm myself and began choking on the dust. My dust. The literal fallout of my actions. I turned Jigsaw down after letting things go too far along. I didn't... I had explained the situation to her in my careful, oh-so-logical way. So everything should be fine, right? All better, no hard feelings, right? Of course not, right? I spread out the dust in my mouth, got up and shook myself. I had to face it. Jigsaw had been tricked or mind-controlled. Whatever she thought she was doing, she was doing it willingly. I looked around until I got my bearings, and then potted towards the library. I had no, I had no right to spy on her, and I would certainly be in the wrong for, to interfere, even if I had the slightest idea of what to do or say. I had another good shake before entering the building, and then released the captain as I went, as I went by her. Can you drink tea? I asked her. I'm thinking of brewing another pot. She didn't reply, so I glanced back at her, crouching on the floor. Eyes huge and staring, just brilliant sparkle. Another notch in the old in the old friendship scoreboard for sure. Sleep, with my heart pounding in my chest like Pinkie Pie, when she, with a new drum set, it wasn't likely. Study, study then. The ledger must have something more I could glean from that from it, but I couldn't seem to focus on the figures. They had all wavered and ran together into a blobby mess. Some time later, I felt them approaching the library, so I put my head down and pretended to sleep. There were a few words exchanged between the captain and the general, too softly for me to make out. Otherwise, no one spoke. Jigsaw slipped through the shields and lay down on her bedroll. It was a very long time until my pretense became a reality. Four new changeling drones arrived with the dawn. They crowded into the hall with the general captain, waking me with the noise of their... Chitty as hooves clattering on the marble floor. Lunch that delivers itself. That's handy, I muttered, rubbing too little sleep, rubbing too little sleep from my eyes. Sorry, Twilight, I didn't catch that. I looked up to see a cup of tea hovering in front of me. I took it in my own magic and had a sip before I couldn't trust myself to speak. Thank you, Jigsaw. Did you want some oatmeal? I'm not hungry, but I'll make some for you if you want. I looked up. She wasn't looking very happy. That was odd, considering. No, thank you. I'm not hungry either. Oh, she said. All right. We drank our tea in silence. What are the plans for today, princess? The general called from the hallway. I set my cup down very carefully. I stood up and dropped the shields. Let's speak outside, general. I made a short teleport out into the street and crawled back through the doorway. Now, if you please. The general emerged from the doorway with the captain close behind her. 
I popped the captain back inside and slapped a shield over the whole building. The general looked back at her, subordinate, struggling to get out of the library, and then back at my expression. Ah, she nodded. I thought I heard something last night. I want you to know that Jigsaw and I, I whipped a loop of telekinetic force around her muzzle and cinched it tight. Her eyes slitted down and she struggled, her horn flaring to life. I hit her with a disturbing... With a, dis with a disruptive blast she that staggered her and made her horn flicker out, and I pulled her tighter on the loop, forcing her head down so that she had to look up at me. Don't! She stopped, struggling, but her eyes blazed. What passed between these two is no concern of mine. I don't wish to hear any more about it. I let her go. I offer my apologies, the general hissed, in accordance with my orders. Best non-apology apology I'd heard to date. I hope your orders allow for an early return to your hive. Or you can buzz around outside the city if you like. I waved a dismissive hoof. So, just so long as you and your little swarm stay long away from here. The general drew herself up, haughtingly. We comprise a cluster, princess. Do I take this to mean that you're rejecting our queen's generous offer of diplomacy? I gritted my teeth. Why couldn't things ever be simple? Quite the contrary, General. We will be conducting some tests today that have the uncomfortable side effect of causing changelings to explode. I'm just concerned for the safety of her. Majesty's subjects, you can return tomorrow, two hours after dawn. I see, she replied flatly. Would Jigsaw be here when we return? That blindsided me. What? Why wouldn't she be? The, the general shrugged. You are her monarch, and she has displeased you. I thought I couldn't get any angrier. I was wrong. We ponies are not like that! I hissed through my teeth. Ah, she blinked slowly. I'm glad to hear that. I waved away the shield around the library. Take your cluster and, and, and get out! The general sketched a bow, never taking her eyes off me. As you wish, your sincere highness. She made a sound like a curse. She buzzed off into the sky and disappeared in the direction of the hive. I could sense the tracking spell in the general for a while and for a while longer, and it didn't seem like she intended to circle back. That was good, because casting and maintaining the shield over an entire city would be exhausting. Twilight? It was Jigsaw standing in the street outside the library. She must have heard most of it. Not all of our talk from the doorway. I, kept, I collected myself before I turned to face her. Jigsaw, I've bought us a day without changing spies, and we need to make the most of it. Grab your kit. We're going to the cornucopia. I, I teleported us both back into the library and began loading up my saddlebags. Get your stuff. Twilight, I... Jigsaw! I stopped my hoof. We will talk about it as much as you like, but later. The cornucopia is there, and I would... It was right under our muzzles, but we missed it. We've only got a day to figure it all out, and I've risked a breach with the changelings to get us that much time. So, we shouldn't waste any of it, okay? She nodded and put her things together. As she was settling her bags across her back, she said, Please, Twilight, there's just one thing I need to know first. Sweet Celestia. I did not want to open the door, but she looked so serious. Yes? Do you despise me for last night? What? No, of course not. Of course I don't, Jigsaw. I admire you for, for many reasons. But you were so angry with the general, I almost, I almost used the, zip, the mouth zipper on her. Later, I said. You know that one thing. Now we need to get busy. I teleported us directly to the cornucopia building. First thing is to see if it's still working. I visualized one of Applejack's best red delicious apples and said, May I have an apple? Nothing. I tried again, taking one more time with my visualization, even imagining the smell of an apple. May I have an apple? Still nothing. Well, the mechanism was over a thousand years old. It wouldn't be surprising if it, no if it was no longer operational. I got out the storybook and flipped to the last pages and laughed. Yeah, maybe I laughed a little bit too much. I had a lot of tension to burn off. Are you okay, Twilight? Yeah, I'm fine, Jigsaw. I shook my head refusely. I just forgot the magic word. <laughs> I turned back to the pedestal and said, 
May I have an apple, please? There was a brief flash and a soft pop, and a perfect red delicious apple appeared on the stone slab. Oh! cried Jigsaw. Let me try. Wait, wait! I held up a hoof to stop her. What is it? That energy dissipation. It was an interstitial exit vortex. Um, in Equish, please. That apple was created. It was teleported from somewhere else. Wait, you mean Jigsaw was one bright mayor? It took her only a few seconds to expo extrapolate the consequences. They stole all of their food? That would be hundreds of years. That would be hundreds of tons of produce a year. Not just their food. I passed her the storybook. I waited while she flipped through the passages. Pages. When she'd finished, she threw the book on the floor. What a horrible little thief! She sneered. That choker probably cost poor artisan a big bag of bits for the metal and gems. And months to take. And months to make. I'm glad these screwheads died out. Jigsaw! I gasped. Hey, I'm a unicorn. I can use the S word if I want. Besides, I've never known a group of dis. I've never. I've never heard. I've never known a group of. I never. I've never known a group so deserving. I didn't feel like arguing with her. I was prepared to be very impressed with their ability to create food, and now. But you can do it, so why would you be impressed? No, I shook my head. There are theoretical methods, but. No pony's ever been able to actually accomplish it. But I've seen you do it! Watercrest sandwiches? Wait, are you trying to tell me that you were stealing food? No, I wasn't stealing it, I assured her. I localized the entry vortex to, to rough the area of Ponyville. Can't really get into more precise than that. So the only place that exact sort of sandwich came from was a target-specific teleport. It was the kitchen of my castle there. It is the kitchen of my castle there? I don't like it. I don't like to do it very often because Chef Soupcon gets irritated with the things when things disappear on her. She's sort of fussy that way. Jigsaw smiled at that. So how wide of an ex of an entry vortex could you make it? If that if that's the right technology to get enough food to the Sudison them to sustain them. These ponies must have covered a big area. Uh, it can be non-specific. Then the spell will just pull the desired item from the nearest source. Saves energy. Jigsaw thought a bit more. I have my own ideas, but it was a pleasure to watch her rip through the possibilities, and it was entirely possible that she'd come up with something I hadn't thought of. So, she said softly, if you can teleport things over that sort of distance, why did we walk all this way? Oh well, it's a bit technical, but if I were to vast, if I were to vastly oversimplify, please do. Quantum uncertainty makes point-to-point -point transverse, transverse, transfer, fucking balls, transference less and less precise over a really long distances. Trying to jump us to my castle would deliver us so somewhere within a to the di diameter sphere. Not very useful, and considering that half that sphere is underground, pretty darn dangerous, but with object specific teleportation, um, this is easier to explain with math. How's your calculus? Not up to the task, I expect. Can you give me an the athletic scholarship version? Well, within a specified but intermediate area, the spell requires all potential targets of the desired type. When the twin transfer vortexes are, are evacuated, the entrance waveform collapses to the location of an of the of an actual object, usually the one in the lowest energy state, and it's linked to the exit vortex at the specific point. Easy to do on the receiving end because that's where the spellcaster is located. Um, right. Sorry, I grinned sheepishly. Maybe if I explain about the relationship between physical objects and their Planetic ideal, which sets which sets a limit on the no no. Jigsaw waved her hooves at me vigorously. That's okay. I think I get how it works, if not exactly why. Long range teleports to some place not well known are difficult and dangerous, but it's possible to do form someplace if you don't want to be specific object. If you don't want a specific object, just one 
of a just one of a general type. Is that right? Well, it's not wrong, I admitted. Jigsaw nodded. Close enough for me, so how much power does this thing take? Rather a lot. Exponentially more by the distance, even without factoring the uncertainty of the target. Another reason I don't do it very often. Jigsaw nodded. So what powers what powers this thing then? It must have it must have used a ridiculous amount of energy when it was feeding and furnishing the whole city. That that is a really good question. She beamed at me. Thank you, and there was only one way we were going to find out, isn't there? She clapped her four hose together and rubbed them up and down. Let's open this baby. Uh, Jigsaw? I didn't quite like the gleam in her eyes. Could you take some precautions? Of course we should, she said, as she pressed her bejeweled prey on the pedestal. There was a faint click. Wait! I cried. Duck and cover, princess, she said with what I'm going to classify as insane glee. As she firmly pressed them, the mosaic lemon. There was a second, much louder click, than the rumble of ancient machinery coming to life. Ah, uh, but yeah, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed um this two-parter of me reading the Celestia Code. Um, these were two really good parts in the story. Um, and I can't wait to read some other parts. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, remember to keep them burning on and. Um, I will not see you guys in a week, so have a fantastic summer, and I will see you guys in two weeks from now. Alright, keep coming, burning on, and bye guys.